was in the office. And by the way, this is a fine bin to have indoors. People have them inside all the time. And people go, oh, you have a worm bin inside? Well, it has about the same impact as a potted plant. Really? Doesn't smell. There's a little bit of stuff dripping out, but stuff drop, drips out potted plants. It has a whole less impact than a bird in a cage making a mess. People keep their guinea pigs inside. Or even your food waste in the trash can next to your desk. <laughs> yeah, really. So honest to God. So we had this yeah, next to her desk in the school office for a couple of years. And um, keep them inside. You can keep your worm bin inside. No problem. Okay, so Augusta, let me get down here. And um, here we go. So here's how we do it. You've got to get down on the ground. And there's some toggles here, which i got to get to. I'm going to loosen. And I have a bunch of owies on my hands. I cut my hand, I sliced off a piece of my thumb. What? And um, so I've got a couple owies. And let me just tell you, I never worry about handling vermicast when I have little cuts. The reason I can't get to this, come on, hello. And I no longer have any strength in my hands. So let me work on this. Is it? Yeah. Oh, there we go. So okay, we just have to get it. So it has a little toggle, and I don't have much strength left in my old person hands anymore. It takes me a while to kind of get it. Hang on. <coughs> it's going to take two hands for me to do this. There we go. Got it. Okay, so I open the bottom. Come, come. And I should get a bunch of vermicast out. We'll see how much. Ah, there we go. Okay, okay, got it. This is just me being old and not having any strength in my hands. It's not because it's all that hard. Okay, so I open up the bottom. I stick my hand in. I start to wiggle it around. I see one worm. Okay, so we got one. I see a few, but not too many. Oh, why do you have worms down here? Uh -oh. Probably been two weeks since we've watered. Really? Okay. It's not as dry as it should be, but it's okay. We'll probably be able to pick those out. And they're big ones. They're not hard. A thousand babies. So here comes the vermicast. It does have a few worms in it, but not too bad. I'll probably be able to pick them out. And I'm going to get out as much as I can. Well, we were low on the bedding, too, when we did this. We yeah, were you were low on the bedding. Well, it'd be good to see this. Maybe you just have a lot of worms and there wasn't room for them That's to probably go up. We didn't, have we didn't do enough bedding. This was the first time we did it without child labor. <laughs> and without me looking over your shoulder saying, more bedding, more bedding. Hey, you no. don't realize how much you have. I know we were a little short on the bedding. What did you use for your bedding? The cardboard. Cardboard. The same. Yeah. Well, there are a few worms in here, but it's not compared to um, hand harvesting, not bad. I would suggest that How you need more bedding. When, yeah, when you're yes. done. Because I mean, Mindy was saying when you do the bedding, you basically need to replace all of the volume of what you took out. So yeah. we usually get about a five gallon bin full of or vermicast, and you need about that same amount of bedding to go back in because you've just got the same amount of worms and you need the same amount of living space. Oh, yeah. There's a few. This isn't perfect, Callie. It's not. No. I'm sorry. I feel like my worm parenting skills are really good. <laughs> 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 You're worm. Always. <laughs> Always. <laughs> okay, I'm going to get another. We can still go. Well, you only get to practice once a year. <laughs> yeah. How do you know when you're done? I mean, when, when, when you start seeing food in, come down. Food yeah. There was a little bit. Yeah. There's like balls of worms. Somewhere. Balls of worms. Um, and we're getting a few. And this, these are going to be easy to pick out. But, um, Generally, when I do this, I don't get any worms, but um, I think she just didn't have enough bedding to start, and so they're just everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. But you see the process. I'm basically in here just scraping, scraping the stuff off the bottom. We stopped putting avocados where the that's where I find all the eggs. Oh, yeah. Okay, well, I am getting some worms. It's just not the perfect. 
This is not any, any way close to the perfect outcome, but it's not bad, and let me tell you, compared to the wet, goopy box bin method, this is gonna take no time at all to pull those few worms out. In fact, you, you can just pull a few out. Okay, so I'm gonna... I'm gonna open up the top so we can put the worms Okay, back now in. I'm done, because now some food is falling out. So when I really hit wet food... Okay, I'm gonna put that back. Come up. Okay, so you know you're done when you start to hit the unprocessed material, right? So we got we got some nice finished vermicast with a little bit of unprocessed material at the very end, and that's when I know I was done. So I'm going to put the chunks of unprocessed stuff back in. It's okay. I'll get it. I'll get it. Hang on. So. That's when you know it's time to stop. Okay, way more baby worms, but they're, not, believe me, compared to a box bin, uh, not a problem. So now I'm gonna close up. Separate them. Um, I, you can actually round it like we do You can make a ball and they'll go eventually go down to the bottom. But there's not that many they can pull out. So you're gonna close this up. These are all babies. you don't leave the room in there, let it do the work and the Well if they end up in the garden they'll just die. Yeah. So this will be going to her garden. Yep, so, so we don't want the worms to go into the garden. Right, you always want to separate those wormies out because they're not going to live in the garden. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you guys, that was not the greatest <laughs> result. Uh, okay. Usually it's way better, you don't have so many worms. So that's why I, I encourage you to use plenty bedding and that'll give them plenty places to move up. But there wasn't enough. That's Nonetheless, a, that's a good troubleshooting. Uh, I mean, everybody will have you know, a, yeah, a be time a or two where they realize that they didn't do something yeah, quite the way they should have. Yeah, and that's should've. perfectly okay. Because look at this beautiful product. Uh, yeah, so this is your vermicast. So this is what all that bedding, all that food, and all that midweek turn into. <laughs> and um, uh, despite this less than perfect harvest you guys get the idea right mm -hmm. so this has saved me a bazillion hours of time just being able to um, do this harvest through the bottom of this bag so this is called a continuous flow system the box bin is a batch system where you make a batch of vermicast separate everybody out make a new batch of bedding start so you over need again two bins if you're going to do it that way no because you're going to dump everything out wash off that bin, yeah, fill it up with bedding, do your hand harvest. Okay. Yep. So you just need one, but with this, um, you conti you're continually putting new stuff in the top and taking the finished product out the bottom. Theoretically. <laughs> it works better most times. Okay, Callie. <laughs> We're going to talk about this. Anyway, so <laughs> now that I've taken a tub and a half out the bottom, I am going to kind of punch this all down to fill up and kind of punch it punch it down so that it's going to fill up the the bottom that um take out all her stuff so what have you got in the bottom now worms and food of just worms? everything that was on the top half i'm now punching down to the bottom so there's worms and food there's some vermicast still paper a little bit so i'm just i'm just loosening it up punching it down, and you don't have to get your hands in here, you can just kind of punch at it. I'm trying to just get it down. So now it's, the bag is only filled to here. So six months or a year from now, I'll be removing this and it'll look like that, only without worms in it, because we're gonna give them sufficient bedding. So she's got plenty worms, plenty food, very happy situation here, and they, they are championship eaters. So everything goes down to the bottom. And I don't care that there's food down there. They're going to work through it. And what I'm going to do is take another whole big batch of bedding and fill this up. Put my layer, new layer of food on. 
new layer of fresh paper and just continue. Okay? So you so don't have to put more bedding under yeah. them? No, they're fine because this is half eaten stuff. They'll go through this real quick. They know it's there. So the worms move freely throughout the bed. So it's not like, oh, okay, it's not on top. They're not going to eat it. Yeah, they will because they're, they're going down there. They prefer to be surface feeders. When you think that they are manure eaters, that's where manure ends up. It's on the surface. So they're, they're surface feeders. But if there's food down below in this soft, fluffy environment, they'll go and eat it down there. They're fine. So everything from the top half now drops to the bottom half. And we're going to fill this thing with bedding. So and in the bin as well, you don't have to put the, uh, the bedding in the bottom? No, no, oh this God. is different. So, the, so um, you are making, basically you're making another batch, but you're doing it on top. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, it's going to process and six months later you're taking it out. So you can do it in, in increments. Money. You can do it in increments every year to every six months. You can take out a little at a time and just add a little at a time. But the deal is, it's continuously going through and drying out a bit at the bottom enough so that the worms, when they are doing what they're supposed to do, will move up into the moist food. They just didn't have enough room to move because there wasn't enough bedding. Now, I brought you a big bag of bedding. You know, what do I do with it? Just fake it, everybody. Yeah, we still have to pick it up and put it in my truck. So. Right. <laughs> so just fake it. See how much? That's 10 gallons. So this, is, this has been dried, so we're faking it. I'm filling this up with this, but what she's going to do is, is moisten it first and then fill it up and then put a layer of this week's food and then some fluffy midweek on top and she's good to go for another six months. So that's it. Everybody kind of get that? Yeah. Okay. It's pretty easy. And I have a... Um, be sure you get both of my handouts and talk about the whole box bin procedure and the whole hangout procedure in detail. So if you you missed that or I forgot something, it's all there. So, um, the bin blanket, do you want to talk about that? Yeah, bin blanket. I like a bin blanket because you can water through it. Let me put a fluffy bed in that. And she'll move that out of the way and put the cardboard base bed in and then put this back. And it needs watering again, doesn't it? We need to have it watered for a while. So yeah. well, we everything's we soggy. Have this two weeks ago, and then we did or last weekend, and then we did this one. Okay. <coughs> okay. I love a bin blanket, which is just four uh, layers of shape cloth, medium shape cloth, and I like to put that on top of all my beds, including the box bin. Let it go. Um, I took it, sorry. Okay. Because it's easy to water through. You're not going to mess up the paper and everything. So um, they carry it at Koala Farmers or at any hardware. It's just called shake cloth. Um, you buy it by the foot um, and then you just cut it to shape. And I use staples. Boy, that's really high tech. I just staple it together, make it, make it um, to fit, and then just you can water through it. So it's really easy for me.